Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accept meaning of angels messenger and the accept meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I do like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Liv Wheeler. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date as it means a lot to both Liv and I for you to join uh, with us and connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, find your purpose, create your future to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps to take and take charge of your destiny, so that you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Liv Wheeler, about the magical practice of offerings. Now, Liv is an initiated quantum bull voice diviner, ritual facilitator, and multidimensional spiritual teacher who has dedicated her life to reweaving the human experience with the sacred. For the past 19 years, Liv has traveled the world connecting to people or connecting people to the vast ecologies of spirit that exist in all communities. As a voice for the little people of the earth, she has reignited people's awareness of the spirit realm across cultures and landscapes. Liv's work is powerful and heart centered, offering the deepest respect for self and spirit. Liv reconnects individuals and groups of people with the very real experience of the spiritual world that is as complex and intricate as the one we experience in our daily physical lives. Liv embodies the initiated feminine cut role of priestess and spiritual leader and teacher. Her work is genuine, heartfelt, courageous and uncompromising teaching all who experience the sacred with her to approach it in the utmost respect and to approach the ancestors and relatives in these realms of spirit with the reverence and dignity they deserve. Now, ultimately, Liv is dedicated to restoring what is human to humanity in the embodiment of the heart, dignity, courage and humbleness befitting a person that understands that we are here to serve what is sacred feeding the unseen so that in turn may continue to feed life. Now, guided by the quantum below, and again, I knew I'd pronounced it wrong as I got there, <laughs> Liv has completed several international <laughs> tours, guiding That's people beautiful. in the, thank you, in the process of healing and spiritual remembering. She published her first book, With the Love of the Ancients, My Spiritual Journey of Remembering in 2018. And in 2019, she also created the Quantum Bowl Medicine School, Earth's Amulet. From the wellsprings of this school came an Earth's Amulet Certification Program, a Heart Center Shamanic Healing School, Priestess Training, and a school for mystics of the Aquarian Age. And she's currently working on a book in honor of the Cosmic Mother. So with all that going on, and without further delay, hello Liv, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny Show. How are you today? Hi Ray, thank you so much. Um, I'm I'm doing amazing. I love to connect with you, so thank you for having me. Ah, you are more than welcome. Um, especially as I know um, you're in Thailand at the moment, so uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind everyone that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments, and thoughts as both Liv and I want to be part of this conversation and we will reply, so please don't be shy. So Liv, why don't you tell us more about your journey and about how the alchemical process of facilitating ritual and ceremony can create that incredible healing for our souls when we approach our ancestors with the foods that they love? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm happy to, and let me um, feel into my heart about where I can dive into my journey. I guess for some reason, the, the place where I feel called to speak about my journey is, is I guess when I first became aware of the little voice in my heart about, um, I think when I was first aware of a calling in the first place, and when I was 
living in the States in a particular state and I was called to travel to the other side of the country and I had this calling in my heart and I didn't know why and that was around age 19 and I just I just didn't exactly understand what it was I just know knew that that voice continued to be there until I responded to it maybe two years later and when I responded to it I noticed that that began a whole maybe like a cascade of events that eventually well I guess not eventually responding to that calling continued to be one more step one more step one more step into my genuine purpose and so when I was reflecting on it my path earlier I realized it's it's really been guided you could say guided by spirit I could also say guided by my heart and maybe they're one and the same, you know, so we have these little voices inside of our heart and that little voice, when I um, recognized that there was wisdom and honoring it and trusting it, that little voice has guided me really well. <laughs> and it takes me to some really maybe unconventional, maybe <laughs> it was bizarre at times, places and definitely doesn't seem to make sense yet it feels really right and this is that little voice is all with me currently in thailand you know so i felt called to to yeah to approach it from that little voice inside of my heart and that little voice trusting in that and and knowing that it's not something to suppress yet there's a lot of wisdom and honoring and trusting in that and so so that little voice has opened up um Great big adventures. <laughs> Great big cool. Adventures. Yeah. Well, well, can you can you share some of those adventures with us? Yeah. <laughs> Great big adventures. Um, let's see what adventure. Well, yeah, they eventually <laughs> brought me to Africa. So I guess you could say, well, I guess people that feel can, you know, later I'll talk about the website and that. And so maybe they'll go to the website if they feel called to to understand some of the more details and there's a there's a book as well but um yeah one of the that that little voice in my heart led me into my path of healing and into my um eventually i guess you could say shamanic path even though at the time i didn't understand what does that even mean yet that was a clear message from the universe um and so that that voice led me to my my longtime teacher who's now on the other side where we continue to, uh, I guess I continue to be a student in a way, <laughs> just now he's on the other side. And um, so working with Maladoma for, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, eight years, yeah, that little voice led me to his doorstep in a way. I mean, he was training a group of people. I wasn't the only one at the, <laughs> <laughs> at the doorstep. <laughs> But it was like the, the signs were undeniable and as unconventional once again as it seemed like, what was I doing at this, you know, person's house uh, learning about shamanism on the face it looked like West African shamanism or more specifically from Burkina Faso in West Africa um, and more specifically the Dagara tribe of Burkina Faso in West Africa. So nothing on the exterior seemed to make sense about it in my heart and my soul knew I was at the right place. <laughs> and then when I, you know, connected with him spiritually and sat with him in divination, then that was confirmed from his side as well that he was aware that I would be coming there. And somehow when I read his book and I read about the Kuntumle, where you mentioned the little people of Burkina Faso in West Africa, such similar to similar to the Fae, the gnomes, the elves, the, you know, so on and so forth all around the earth. So, so yeah, when I um, read his book, for some reason that, that particular aspect of it, when I read about the Kuntumle, somehow that especially jumped out to me and I was, my response, I even said it out loud, I knew they were real and <laughs> I knew they were real. And um, just somehow I knew they were real. And somehow I believe that was them guiding me there probably. 
and and so in this I, I started this three-year training with him which we ended up going to Burkina Faso West Africa as part of the training the shamanic training and then after the end of that three-year training then he asked me to continue to support you know the next group the next group and so that that whole kind of twisty windy journey um led me to Burkina Faso, West Africa, which was not some place that I thought I would be headed when I listened to that voice from Florida to California, <laughs> from Florida to San Francisco. <laughs> That's where I thought I was going with San Francisco, not Burkina Faso, West Africa. <laughs> yeah, amazing, isn't it? It's sort of like where yeah. whatever, whatever we think we're going to be doing or where we're going, when we actually listen to the um, to, to those nudges, those voices and um, take notice of all those like coincidences that take place, we get led to completely different places, which, which turn out to be even more amazing than what we think thought we were going to be doing. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. And so that, yeah, I, and I, I and and that was that was surprising to me also when I um, arrived there for the first time because I had what people speak about uh, um, the topic of awakening is increasingly more and more common. I notice and and I I do believe we are in the great awakening. But at that time, my first time in Burkina Faso, I think I was maybe maybe I was twenty nine, maybe I was thirty or thirty one. I don't recall. It was somewhere around there, but um. My first time touching that soil, I don't know exactly, somehow it ignited something deep, ancient, something something ignited in my being, which I would say if if there is if I've an experienced an, an awakening in my lifetime, that was well, that was maybe the start of it. I think it happens in in waves. It happens not just once, but many times. But that was a, a very, very like a deep and ancient kind of awakening that happened for me that was full of grief and ecstasy simultaneously and nothing made sense. And yet my soul knew that energy somehow. So, yeah, that was a very, very profound experience and in some ways initiated the, the deepening of my relations, relations with the um, or I became more conscious of my connection with the little people, basically, or the we folk. And and then they continue to take me on journeys around the earth. <laughs> Apparently they like to go on journeys. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> they say, come on, we have a lot of friends for you to meet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love it so where did so so did you go to Thailand from Africa or did you go elsewhere first oh yeah Thailand this is like a I've just been here at present I've just only been here for maybe three weeks but um from um oh gosh yeah I've traveled a lot in the meantime over those years that and and you know a lot of places sometimes let's say i would be at <laughs> this is kind of funny <laughs> i'm just remembering this i was i was at a um a yoga training once in rishikesh and at that point i had just gotten married and i was trying to figure out exactly how all of this functioned together because i was uh initiated and and active <laughs> in some way voice diviner and not exactly how, sure how that fit into that particular marriage. I mean, I've only been married once, but I didn't know exactly how that all worked together. So so that somehow led us to, to Rishikesh, to yoga teacher training. <laughs> I think we were trying to figure out how that all worked together. And so I was, in a sense, I was kind of trying to, in a sense, I was kind of, I think I was trying to keep it hidden a little bit at that time. You know, I wasn't I wasn't exactly sure how it, it you know, it all flowed together. There was no handbook that I received. And so so I was at this um this uh this Ayurvedic doctor. I was at this Ayurvedic doctor at the clinic just to, you know, receive some healing and uh to have my, I don't know, like dosha read or something like that. And so he was asking different questions about 
um, about my profession and I was I was trying to kind of like keep everything quiet and I I think I said he I don't know he must have been really intuitive and so he was asking questions and I think I just said something tried to kind of like keep it very watered down and I was like I I, I work with the ancestors and he 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 leaned in and he was like what I believe in this and he was like what he wanted to hear more <laughs> uh, wonderful <laughs> he wanted to hear more and then that just led to all of a sudden the next thing I knew he was he was wanting to have a a, a reading or a divination and so that led to me and I then needed to explain to him about the Kantamle and the little people and he would they were so open and welcoming and honoring and so that led to <laughs> being at the clinic before it opened and going into like a full divination there in Rishikesh and it, and it was really beautiful it was so beautiful because in that in that environment they have such like honoring and reverence towards the um, I guess the mystical and towards the, you know, these, these different ways and practices, but that even when I was trying to kind of like keep it, keep it hidden a little, a little bit or a lot, then after that, next thing I know, he was calling and saying, ah, oh, there's these people I want you to see. So it's happened sometimes in these very, um, and maybe that spirit behind it all the time anyway. So even when we try to kind of keep it, mm. Uh, like sequestered or something like that. I imagine you've experienced those things also. Then spirit <laughs> find a way, like bring it out of the closet, bring it out of the closet, bring it out of the closet. Oh yes, yeah. You you that and I think that's the beauty when you when you when you start on that spiritual path or you open up or you recognize that you're on that path that. Um, you will always be guided um, to a certain place, and if you don't follow through with certain things then they'll find a way of actually exposing that and yeah. and and making make making it happen so in the end you can you kind of like have to go okay I sur I surrender I ain't gonna fight this anymore totally 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 yeah so it made for some really colorful colorful adventures and I and I've loved it I've loved it too and you know it's shown me also it's shown me how universal um spirit really is i mean it's so universal and so i've sat with uh, i've sat with the kantama i've sat with the little people and places and you know in cambodia and india and mongolia and peru and i mean in a, a lot of different places throughout the states and in many different environments and with the person no matter even before the translation happens it's beautiful because when i sit with let's say if i sat with other um, shamans or like people of medicine in these different places, they understand the energy, you know, before the translation happens and they just, they understand it in a way that's been very, um, uh, it's been, what's the word for that? It's felt very comforting. It's felt very comforting to experience that. Whereas in the culture where I was raised, it's, you know, it's kind of a strange thing still for maybe not so much more lately because it seems people are opening up much more. I've noticed that in the past few years to um, different kinds of spirit languages. Um, but before that, then, yeah, it was just kind of a felt a little bit like a, a, a culture culture shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, what is this? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I can, I can answer that. It, it is sort of like now a lot more people are open to, to more, to, to different spiritual uh, practices, ideas, thoughts, yeah. energies, um, coming in than they were, say maybe ten years ago. Um, you, you, you know, which, which I think is absolutely amazing because all these new ideas that may have been kept hidden. Are now coming out, so you're learning more about different, um, di different things that you wouldn't have heard of once once before. We, you know, which is creating this this beautiful, I think, eclectic mix of different things that, in a way, although different, all weave together in right. in 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 a certain way. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Yeah, and I love that you say that too, that they all weave together too, even though they seem like um, disparate or these different kinds of this is over here and this is over here and this is over here. And sometimes I think in, there, probably are, there probably is artwork like this, maybe visionary artwork like this, but sometimes I think, I, I, I long to see that where all of those kind of spiritual dimensions and the ways that they, they are all together, you know, they really are all together. I feel that, as you say, this like woven way. And, and speaking of that too, they, they have told me many times also is, I mean, they're part of our DNA, you know, many of the little people, they are, they're in our DNA. So I could say um, at the soul, the soul level okay so i'm connected with the kuntama likely from different dimension different uh different dimension and then also you know from my blood ancestry also like the fey are very connected you know I, I know that's part of my dna and when i'm traveling into different like maybe especially when i was in wales and scotland in particular places i'll really feel that part of my DNA, I'm like, oh, I feel the fate, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And when I'm in Wales, I'm like this. I, 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 not, not so many places. Even though my ancestry is in the different places, but those two places in particular, when I was in Wales and um, Scotland, it, I'm, it was lighting up my DNA a lot. And so I would, I would feel the stronger like connection with the fate. And uh, but they, but they have shown me that, and I do believe that a lot of humans are we could say discovering this remembering this or if they if people believe this or not of course it's everybody's free to believe whatever they wish to believe but i do believe that this is a remembering i've been going through i believe it's true that we whatever the human being is 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 this braided you know braided like the dna braided braided from the various um galactic or you know angelic the various galactic angelic maybe helping yes. us get into this ascension experience but um but they have shown that and it's the the braids too they talk a lot about braids okay yeah that yeah that, that's interesting you know that you know my, my you know what i do is help people remember that remember their divine presence because we all have this mm -hmm. in us it's not something new it's just we it's just remembering just remembering, just remembering. Yeah, and I feel like that is ultimately, you know, I do, I feel that it is, there's a, there's a quality of, um, I experience that, or I've experienced that as deeply satisfying, like a, a deep satis, a satisfying energy. There's something that before that I was longing and I was chasing and I was hungering for and maybe I was trying to fill it with material and this kind of there's a kind of like satiating energy that I experience from communing with the spiritual dimensions that I, I do believe that where it's 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 where it's just simply part of the human design just as as you're communicating about I feel like I'm relating to it in a maybe a slightly different perspective but same just a different perspective, but that is something that I've experienced in my journey that I feel so grateful for that I do experience a deep, a deep um, satisfaction. I know it's kind of a funny way to say it where before there was a, a deep longing. And so when I first started, when I connected with the Contemplé in this lifetime, when I would sit with diviners before I knew that this was gonna wake up in my own being a lot of times I would cry. I would just cry. I would grieve because I, I didn't realize it was something I was missing so much, you know, and, and I believe this is it. So when we um, commune with the angels or remember that, you know, angelic aspect of our soul, I feel like it really um, can be so well calming. Also, like what you said too, the angels can have such a calming presence yeah yeah exactly you know and again galactic beings can have that calming presence the fae can have that you know the little people can can have that and i like that you said ever you know the different perspective because that is what i think is so is so brilliant we need all these different perspectives because they will resonate with different people 
Um, so, you know, so people that might not, you know, connect with the angel, with the angels, with the angelic realms, might not listen to me. But you know they're you know, but they might take on board what what you say because they're more connected to to little people. And in the end, it all goes back to the to the to the to the same to that oneness with with everything. So so I love the one that you said about the perspective, and that and that is the beauty of all these different perspectives out there. Yeah. You know, just connect to so many different people to help them remember in whichever way is. Is, is is possible for them so so I love that, that that you mentioned mentioned that so where where else do you know what what else do you do where what else what else do you no know, what where else do you do where else do you go where have you been <laughs> what are you doing how can people do this you, you know yeah yeah well I felt called before um before we started recording felt called they asked me to bring this these rattles and bells next to me for the for the purpose of it's interesting you said that so like where else where else have I where else have I gone there's different places where I've journeyed and there's for some reason they were asking me to speak also too about the the ways that we the shift that can happen also there's different ways that we can shift and you know sometimes we shift through going into meditation and we can connect with the other realms it's funny when I said shift the lighting shifted I just noticed <laughs> yeah <laughs> it shifted the lighting but um the shift the shift you know people talk about the shift from third dimension to fifth dimension and and we you know we can access we can go into these different dimensional spaces also and somehow they were really talking to me as well before about somehow I was feeling myself even deeply inspired about the 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 feminine way or the female way that we're we're doing this and we're remembering this and we're reclaiming this as well somehow that was really sparked in my heart earlier and well I mean I have dedicated my path in some ways also to the honoring of the feminine but there's some way that it feels like they're talking about this kind of um uh, remembering for the feminine also of our of our particular ways that we connect with the spiritual dimensions in some ways it can be a very um, watery fluid way somehow it can also be very musical you know entering in through song and in that kind of way and so for example um, when I went to Burkina Faso in West Africa and when I went through my um, initiation and initiation so these these bells here these bells connect to the cantumbla when i you know shake the rattle and ring the bells then they it's kind of like opens up that that gate or that doorway and then they start like ah, you know coming in and speaking yeah in their um but that that is you know where some people feel really kind of like trapped in the physical dimension and trapped in the ways of the uh, mundane or the kind of like density and everything that's happening when we can remember or recall that we we have we have the capacity we have that you know the connection the access with all our guides and guardians this is a way and just like as you said there are so many ways and it's something I love about the my experience of the little people too they encourage the unique way with every soul that it's not one way, you know, it is naturally that we can experience this feminine or masculine or neutral or however anybody can, but this is some way that they show me also with the feminine that somehow um, they talk about that, that, that way that we are kind of naturally artistic and that we, that we can approach our, our spiritual path and al allow it to be creative you know that it can be creative and I was musing on like the deeper I've connected with uh, with the little people too they it's it's such creative energy and it's like the the result of it is that I feel like painting or coloring or doing something like that when when in my younger years before realizing that I was connected with them I didn't realize that my creative uh, impulse was coming also from them you know that that is a way that we connect with the other world and so there are these ways you know that you can like go into this kind of 
rhythmic space or this, you know, musical space and through song. And we were talking about um, offerings because this is something that, well, I believe it was originally, I was trying to remember, I was like, was Maladoma the first person where I'd heard about offerings? I think I'd heard about it before Maladoma. And when I was working with Maladoma, that was definitely like a distinct part of the practices in connecting with the waters, nature, any of the beings really is like always to approach with an offering. And as I, as I deepened in my own practice and as I kind of like went deeper into my own authentic experience with the, with the spirit world, with the other world, I felt, yes, definitely offerings feel to me so right. And also the way that feels right for me is, is to do it just with a pure heart, you know, just like approaching it, not really asking for anything. It's just, just approaching with a heart of generosity. And I can say, the other day I was with my friend and we went into into nature. We were called into nature, into the mountains here. And the 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 Kintamale, the little people, they had said, you know, bring these offerings to the ancestors of the land here. <laughs> and so we bring these yeah, she, she doesn't she doesn't actually normally come up when I'm uh, recording this. That was pretty she, awesome. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That was pretty awesome. And so they were saying, I love that. I feel blessed by your cat. That's so sweet. Um, and they were saying, uh, oh, okay. They were saying, you know, bring these offerings to the ancestors of the land. In this instance, it was like rice, tea, um, this artisanal, they would say like artisanal um, wine, some wine that's created from the, like the local people here. And so we we didn't know what that was and then we were led there and these tea teas that were particular you know to this area and and so when we went there then i would just get i would i would get guided in a very kind of just feminine natural intuitive way just like that little voice and we were on the scooter oh, okay make this offering to the tree there was this you know <laughs> they said handsome tree <laughs> I was like handsome they said handsome <laughs> somebody thinks the tree is handsome <laughs> That's a all thing. trees are handsome all trees are handsome so going to this tree and it was interesting because before that we both just felt we were in our whatever kind of emotional state and so we stop make offering to the tree get on the scooter keep going because we're making our way into nature and i noticed i was like hmm, i feel a little different felt uh, that that felt really nice to make that offering you know it just happened naturally the feeling of like wow that felt really nice and then go and there's a stream and the contemplator is saying oh it'd be nice to offer a coin to that stream and so i was saying to my friend you have a coin she said ah i have a coin <laughs> and so there's the stream and i'm you know saying something because what they have taught me also as they say the way is as important as the thing. So the way we make the offering is as important as the thing that we're offering. And so I'm like connecting with my heart and saying, thank you so much to the, you know, to the spirits of the water. Thank you so much for um, allowing us to be here. And so make the offering of the coin to the, to the stream and then continue on. And it would continue like that. Oh, it will be nice to offer rice here. And and as we continued, I just noticed, I was like, the joy just continued to grow and grow and grow. And I was like, oh, my God, I feel so happy. <laughs> and then, oh, my God, I love this. You know, it was like that. And she was like, oh, my God, I feel so happy, too. <laughs> and then we get to this particular place. There was a river and that we could walk across. It was shallow enough that we could walk across up to our knees. And we had honey and they said it would be nice to offer river or honey to this river so i'm offering honey to the river and saying thank you so much for letting us be here You're, you are so beautiful and then crossing the river and by that point i was really really in the energy with the, the spiritual dimensions and feeling amazing and then get on the other side and i noticed i was like there were these three coins that it looked like they were glowing. They just out of nowhere, one, two, three, these three coins. And I got so excited because 
I could feel this kind of glow that felt like those are magical coins. And I was like, ah, where was the magic? <laughs> 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 and so I pick up the coins and I'm like connecting with the consultant. They're like, take these coins, you know? And I was like, ha, ah, where was the magic? This is amazing. I could feel it. And I was like, oh my God, this feels so good. And then my friend that I was with, she, she is naturally so loving. And it was this one tree that it was like one, two, three. It, something felt really unique about this particular tree. Again, she sits down and she makes an offering. And I could just feel the way we were being received by the natural world. And it just continued. It, was, it wasn't like simply, it would, be, it would be enough to be communing in love with the natural world but there were these these qualities these energies that just continue to grow and fifth dimension yeah for sure and some i don't know what else some beautiful beautiful energies that we had entered into how and it wasn't even like i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna get this it was simply just that pure way of just trusting and following and little simple offerings just made from a pure heart. And by the time we left, we were like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. And, and so that's, that's something that I've been, they've, that they've been teaching me. They've been teaching me about offerings through the years. And it feels, you know, I, I feel in my, in my heart experience of it, I feel that it is very, very connected to the, quality of abundance and and I do believe I believe that's that we are naturally generous beings and when I was in nature they were telling me they were saying you know it's it's a process of us remembering our true nature that we are nature and then yeah. when I'm in nature and I observe nature I see extraordinary generosity you know the the river is giving so generously and the trees are giving oxygen, everything is giving so generously. And so going in there, it's like, it doesn't feel like there's anything being taken from me. It feels like it's simply remembering um, our true nature, our true human design. That's what I believe. Yeah, beautiful. You know, I, I just I just love the way that whole journey um, when <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God, that is so amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> you, you, you know, and I think sometimes we, we forget about our, um, about offerings. Um, it, right. You know, our ancestors did it all the time, but it's something, you know, I try to remember. But there are times when I've when, you know, when I I forget, I mean, I'll, it'd be, if I approach a tree, I'll always ask the tree and I'll thank it afterwards you know and maybe offer it some water um but sometimes you're just so busy that that that, that you that you forget absolutely absolutely and and what you're saying too about the the ancestors too I mean when when I've shared this through the years it's especially a lot of times it's especially with the ancestors when people start their practice of making offerings with their ancestors and they'll say well what do I offer them and say well, what did they love you know what did they love and if they're ones that you knew from when they were alive too it's like what was their favorite food my dad likes sushi ah. <laughs> like everybody you know and if it's offering them that that it's just like what, what we all have things that we love and and that the very thing that will light your heart up is unique to you just like what we we're talking about that unique thing and for me what that little thing is and it can be a little thing but it's like that little thing that you love and that little thing it's just like the key to open up like a greater um wellspring of love or something like that and they just feel so i, th I feel like they it, they love to be remembered like that and to and to be to be remembered in such a way that it's like they they haven't gone anywhere they're here with us and it, and it feeds that connection and it feeds that um, that love and also protection, that protection that they give us. And it feeds, I always see it like that figure eight, you know, that infinity sign that when we connect to the, the higher realms, I always see when I go into meditation. So I see that infinity sign and 
when I feel that when they show me about offerings too, this is what I experience. They say, you know, we make offerings to them and it helps to grow that current and they they send this like stronger current to us and this current continues to grow stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah. Yeah, I really felt that it's you you were you were sat you Aww. you were saying that. that. That was that was like I like it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. You, probably, you probably saw me start start swaying because uh, I, 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 I love the affinity true. symbol anyway. So oh, yeah, yeah, you're so strong, connected with the with the spirit world. Yeah. So how do pe So how do you normally help people? You know. Um, well, you know, what do they come to you for? How do you work with them? Yeah, that changes. It changes according to, I guess, so I have a school, um, I would say like a heart, well, I, I say on the website, it's a heart-centered sh shamanic school. I say that because, it, because people practice from different places and the heart to me is very important, you know, to, 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 distinguish that it is you know we're connecting through the heart and um but so i say there's different ways because they kind of it i received different assignments from them so recently in the past few years they've had me really connecting with the cosmic mother and kind of remembering these galactic connections which all of it as you mentioned it all ends up weaving into maybe the same world tree or the same you know the same tree that's connecting the the heavens and the earth but um right now right now our current offering well soon we we do have an offerings series that's happening in later september and every once in a while i'll do one-on-one -on -one quantumly divinations but usually more often it's in like community ceremonies and things like that and um and right now yeah, we're kind of like working on create some creations for coming in into next year. So right now I'm in a big kind of like feel like creation phase of these um, visions that they're giving. And it feels like maybe as above, so below that it's connected to the, the shifts that are happening in the cosmos or something like that. And so to reflect that, uh, like they brought in this language the other day, um, daughters of the Milky Way and so that's what I'm experiencing with them is at first maybe I felt like daughter of the earth and then it shifts daughter of the Milky Way and so you know as we're kind of shifting into this maybe universal consciousness and you know this kind of thing so um so I'm in that kind of I guess you could say in a way kind of like training <laughs> yeah I'm like wait what's a light body wait what is this <laughs> <laughs> some people that were talking about ascension for you know 20 years or something i was not doing that i didn't know i was like wow some people were really on it with this whole ascension thing <laughs> yeah but but then i but then i think everyone comes to it um when their when their their their, their time, time is right you know mm -hmm. and you obviously need to, to have all you know explore that earth that groundedness so mm -hmm. that when you go um into these um, higher dimensions you're still grounded bringing that down here whereas if you were to go straight into them you might not be able to incorporate into everyday life that's a good point um that's a really and, good point and that because because we have to because i think we have to remember we, we you know we have to be grounded because right. we are in a human you know a human body on this earth at the moment and we you know and we can be in that um other dimension or well whatever dimension it is um but we still have to be able to bring that back on here onto earth so we need yeah. that 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 grounding to to you know to the um, energies to the ancestors here on earth to bring that information out yeah 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 and that's been a work in progress <laughs> 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 like okay 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 i'll ground <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 one of the most easiest but there's we one of the things that we always 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 um always forget i i, I think most people that yeah. know me always will go oh god you always say ground <laughs> i know i was a tree in a previous lifetime of course i'm gonna grow i'm of course i'm gonna Were say you? i was it. really feeling the tree energy with you so much okay that's that's 
earlier when we were connecting, I was like, oh, I was trying to understand that connection I was feeling with you with the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Hence, hence why I obviously like trees, uh, trees, trees, trees so much. Um, but that takes us very nicely um, onto. As you know, I do guided meditations and angel oracle card readings, and each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guided meditation or pull an oracle card for themselves and those watching. So, Liv, what would you like me to do? Oracle card, pretty please. I have them in my hand as we speak. <laughs> that felt really exciting. <laughs> I, re I really don't have a deck of cards, a, an oracle deck with me somewhere along the line, various uh, uh, different ones. So when I do um, uh, readings, I don't actually do the readings to predict the future. Um, I do the readings for what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time. Because although I work with the past and past life, and things when I take people back to the past is to learn and heal from it so it doesn't affect them in the present and when I take people into the future it's so they can learn understand and know the steps they need to take so they can bring that back to the present um so everything is always what does live and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time what does live and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good Let's see which card is going to come out for us today. I love it. In the flow, everything is smooth sailing. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's Aww. so. You, you know, perfect with with what we with what we've been talking about and allowing the flow to guide us. Um, and oh, so you know, so this this is sort of like confirmation for you, you oh, know, that beautiful. that everything is in the flow, and when you're in that flow, it is smooth sailing, and it and you know, and it will be smooth sailing um, for you with what you're creating and what you, and what you're doing because oh. you, because you have stayed in that flow and you'll continue to stay um, in in that flow. So that is absolutely amazing that that's cards come out that. for you, that's you know, that. and. And for everyone watching, you know, if you can get into that flow state, then things will move, for, um, you know, will move smoothly for you. And if you're already in that flow state, just be aware of it and just see how things just sort of like move along so easily, um, like you're in a boat just sailing across the river with the breeze blowing behind you, pushing you um, where, where you're going. So yeah, I lo I love that. I love that, that cards come out for you, Liv, and for oh. everyone who's 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 actually watching watching the show um, for that. So Liv, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Yeah, you know, I feel called to encourage everybody to um, to trust that little voice in their heart. You know, I feel like I feel like the out the outer world right now can feel so loud, so loud and so can feel chaotic. And um, I know people are kind of experiencing all kinds of emotions. Kind of it's it can feel so um, compelling to get drawn into it in a way that can be all kinds of ways. And I feel like if 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 everyone can even just attune to their inner heart, even just for five minutes or something, you know, just for a really short time and, and listen and just kind of like, sometimes spirit says, know, know what you know to be true. Like to let, to let themselves know, know what they know to be true, to, to trust and to know that, that that is, that we all carry our own kind of inner voice and inner truth and it doesn't need to be anybody else's truth and it doesn't need to be endorsed by anybody else it can just simply be true that we can we can know that for ourselves and and give ourselves that and in that kind of what can seem like a little voice that can connect us with with the 
divine the light just came out right when i was still on the divine <laughs> that's nice connect us with the divine yeah absolutely uh, beautiful and a, and a good reminder for, um, uh, for us you know to also unplug um from from uh from the outside world and just sometimes and just go within so we can we can go in that flow state so thank you so much for that reminder that was very very so um wa wonderful so i hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because i know i definitely have so Liv, if people want to connect with you how do they do that and i think you mentioned um about uh, something you've got coming up in september yeah yeah so they can um they can go to my website which is earth's amulet like uh earth with s at the end earth's amulet.com and then i do have a, a two-day uh offerings ceremonial class you could say also will be like a contemplate ceremony um at the end of september and uh yeah if they go to the website and then there's there's a tab that says current offerings and then those will say what's what's um what's available currently for our school and I th yeah that's the best way to to reach me right now and then um so they can send us an email or they can sign up for the newsletter through the website yeah beautiful and i will put the um, direct link to Liv's website i'm um, in the comments once the show's finished and can people get your books uh, on most platforms like yeah yeah that's true they can they can they can get uh, my book through amazon so if they go to the website there's a there's a tab i think that so it's um the it'll link to the book and then where they can get the book but yeah thank you they they can get the book through the website right excellent <laughs> sometimes i forget i wrote a book <laughs> <laughs> they can tell me convince me to do that <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's brilliant that, that you that you know that obviously they wanted to get their information out there and, and you helped get that information out there and obviously you're working on a book at the moment I um, know, that's true yeah yeah I'm, I'm really excited about it yeah no um, that'll be that'll be amazing um uh when, when it comes out um oh no you're welcome so if anyone watching you are ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but maybe you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 minute uh, clarity video call to see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free gift of a connect with your guides and angels PDF or a future life progression recording, as well as a couple of other free gifts if you want to sign up to my email list. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And the wisdom that Liv has provided today would possibly help them on their journey. Um, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please do feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations. Because every single time um, you like, comment, share, subscribe to anything I offer, anything my, my guests offer, any of our social media, it really helps with the algorithms and helps us get our messages out there to other people and you can be part of that that web of you know of, of helping people remember their divine presence and take charge of their destiny and of course i look forward to seeing you all same time same place next week take care everyone bye